Okay, so today we finally get to talk about those slammed asymptotes. What is even going on with those? So, um, very quickly, just to give you a brief idea, um, we will, starting tomorrow in our next lesson, we're actually going to be uh, graphing the horizontal and vertical asymptotes that we learned how to find. Right? Oh, the gosh, that was so bad. Hold on. So you might have a graph that looks something like this. So you might have vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and then the graph itself ends up looking something along the lines of, oh, I don't know, and then oops, something like that. Okay. So we've seen ones kind of similar to this before. Those are what the horizontal and vertical asymptotes kind of look like. So what we're going to look at today is the slant asymptotes. So what's going on with graphs like this, you're going to have your x and y axis, and then the, you're going to have this slanted asymptote. So let me just, let's just pretend that you get a slant asymptote like that. What ends up happening, and you may have a, um, your graph is going to end up doing something like this. It's so cool. They might do something like. So uh, usually there's still another vertical asymptote right here. And then you have, they go along this, this just, it's just going to be a line that's not perfectly horizontal or vertical. All right. So your graph ends up with these interesting sort of, curves right so how do you find them and when do they happen okay so turns out that the only time that you're going to have a slant asymptote is in one specific scenario the scenario goes back to the degrees of the numerator and the denominator so if you're looking uh what has to happen in order to have a slant asymptote is that the degree of the numerator has to be exactly one more than the degree of the denominator Okay, so it, yesterday we were just looking at if it's greater than or less than. So now this has to be greater and it has to be greater than by one than the bottom one. Okay, so if you look at these five real quick, that's the case for all of them. That's a two, that's a one, that's a three, that's a two, two, one, three, two. Okay, so degree one more on the top than it is on the bottom. Okay, so how do you find where that slant asymptote is going to be? It's actually a pretty easy procedure, and I'll show you how to do it right now. So let's see if I can. I'm going to try and zoom in enough so I can. Yeah, I can probably make this work. Okay, so I'm just going to be looking at number one right here. So I'm ignoring all of this. I'm just looking at number one. All you have to do to figure out where your slant asymptote is, is you're going to do out this division. Okay, so you're going to do long division x plus 3 divided into x squared minus 6x minus 1. Okay, so hopefully you remember your long division, but let's go through it just in case you don't. So I'd have x plus 3 on the outside. And on the inside, x squared minus 6x minus 1. Just double check that everything's written in standard form. If you have any degrees that are missing, remember to replace them with a zero placeholder. Okay, and let's begin. So you ask yourself, what do I multiply x by to get x squared? And the answer is x. So I put an x up at the top, and then I multiply the x times everything out in front. So that would give me x squared plus 3x. However, you need to now come in and subtract that whole thing. So I'm going to minus x squared, and I'm going to minus 3x. So when I do that subtraction, you'll notice that the x squared cancel, just like they're supposed to. And then uh, negative 6x minus 3x is a negative 9x. And then I'm going to bring down that minus 1. And then I repeat the process. What do I multiply x by to get negative 9x? The answer would be a negative 9, so I put it up top. And then I'm going to multiply through. Negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative 9 times 3 is a negative 27. And then I need to come in and subtract that whole line. 
So you now become a plus and so do you because I'm subtracting negatives. Nine X's are gone and negative one and 27 leaves me with a positive 26. Okay, there is nothing left for me to bring down. So normally we'd write, go up here and write the remainder plus 26 over X plus three. You actually don't have to do that because you don't even care. You don't care about the remainder here, which is so interesting. Oops. Oh, my. There we go. So you don't care about the remainder. I really just care about this. That is the equation of my slant asymptote. What? Yeah, literally, it's just y equals x minus 9. So if you were to graph that, think of what that looks like, right? Isn't that just a straight line? Y equals m equals b at start negative 9, go up 1 over 1. So when I go to graph this crazy thing, it's going to, let's see, negative 9 and then up 1 over 1, something like this. You're going to have a slant asymptote right there that this craziness will approach but never actually touch how cool oh my goodness this one also has a vertical asymptote i know you're probably looking at this and thinking oh hey x could never equal negative three because that would make that denominator zero you are so right there would be a vertical asymptote at negative three so this uh graph is going to do i don't know what it does exactly but it's going to do something like Maybe a boop here and a boop here. I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow, right? But so today, all I need you to do is b to be able to tell me where that vertical or uh, slant asymptote is. Okay, I'm going to do uh, one more. I think I'll actually do number three, and then I'll ask you to do the rest of them. Okay, there's only five, so there's not very many at all. I wanted to do number three just because this one needs some zero placeholders. Oh, and here comes my son. Where's, where's my scissors? Uh, I don't know where your scissors are, honey. You shouldn't be having scissors. Where's my scissors? I don't know, honey. Mommy's making a video right now. Can you go see daddy? Okay, so number three. So again, I'm not, I don't care about these. Um, I have my degree is one more in the numerator than the denominator, so I know I'm going to have a slant asymptote. It's just a matter of where is it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our long division and see if we can find it. Oh boy. So I mentioned already that we're missing we're missing some degrees, so I'm going to fill them in. So I'd have x squared plus zero x plus one. And then on the inside, I'm going to have, I don't know if I can fit everything. Sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to start over. X squared plus zero X plus one on the outside. On the inside, X to the third, I don't have an X squared term. So I need a zero placeholder for it. Minus five X. And then I do want a zero placeholder for my constant. I need everybody. So I need x to the third, second, first, and the constant, x to the zero. I need everybody. So everybody's here now, and so we can begin. What do I multiply x squared by to get x to the third? x. So notice, I'm going to put it in the x column, because everything here should be x to the third. Everything here should be x squared. Everything here should be x to the first. So that's how I know where to put it, OK? So I put the x up top, and I'm going to multiply by everything out in front. X to the third, zero x squared, and then x times one is a positive x. Come in and subtract all of this. So minus, minus, minus. That's gone. Yeah! Sorry. Oh, good, honey. Negative five x. Okay, honey, can you go see daddy? Okay, so anyway, I know that there's zeros and they're weird, but you're still going to keep going just like it was any other number. You're going to Earth? Orbit. Orbit. moon. You're going to orbit the moon? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's 
Okay, so, so sorry guys. So now I'm still gonna ask myself those same questions. What do you multiply x squared by to get zero x squared? The answer is zero. So I'm still going to put um, zero up at the top, multiply it through. I know they're all just zeros. Zero x squared. Oh, and I forgot to bring down the plus zero. See, he got me all confused. Zero x squared plus zero x plus zero. Subtract it all. I get the negative six x. There's nothing left for me to bring down though. And remember, I don't even care about my remainder. All I care about is what's up here. And I don't need the plus zero because it's just plus zero. So my slant asymptote here is just y equals x. That's it. Okay, so try the other ones. So again, all you're doing is the long division. Oh, you know what? I, I'll help you start number two. I'm just looking at it real quick and that one was a little bit weird. Man, you're gonna have like none left to do on your own. I know you're probably so sad about that. Okay, so number two, it's just weird because of one thing you'll see in a second. So three X minus six, and I'm gonna divide that into X squared plus six X minus four. Okay, so it's weird because of this right here. Everything's in, I don't need any zero placeholders, but give me two more minutes, okay? What do you multiply three X by to get X squared? The three. X is fine, but how do you turn a three into a one? You got to multiply it by a one third. Mommy. Miller, please. Can you give me one minute? Mommy. What? See that? Yes. Those are his bones. The bones? Yes, that is larger bones. Oh, okay. So, yes, this you're going to have to deal with fractions, and it just is what it is. But uh, as we do it out, you'll notice it's actually not so bad. So one third times three X is just X squared, right? I get one X squared. And then one third times, uh, one third X times negative six is just a negative two X. Come on in and subtract those two. So that's a minus and this now turns into a plus. That's gone. Six X plus two X is gonna get me eight X. Bring down the minus four. Okay, and then I do it again. What do I multiply three X by to get eight X? Hmm. So what do you, what do you multiply three by to get to eight? If you're not sure, just what do you multiply three by to get eight? Wouldn't it just be eight thirds? Right? So I know it's weird, but it's just gonna be eight thirds that goes up top, a positive eight thirds. And then this is how you can self-check yourself. When you take eight thirds and you multiply it by everything out in front, eight thirds times three X is eight X. Eight. Okay, honey. Eight thirds times six. Let's see, that would get me six, honey, please. That would get me a minus six. He's like crawling on top of me. All right, can you not? I just got to, you can't hold my hand. So I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, now you come in and subtract them both. So that's a minus, wait, wait, wait. That's a plus, that's gone. And I'm left with a 12, but it doesn't even matter because I don't care about the remainder. I only care about, <laughs> well, he's got my pen. I don't have my pen anymore. But it's just what's at the top there. Y equals one third X plus eight thirds. Oh, look, he's coming to draw. This is <laughs> look at that pretty picture you made. Okay, well, anyway, the answers are at the bottom. Hopefully, uh, you were able to focus more than I was. All right, good luck. Let me know if you have questions, guys. Oh, you want to keep drawing? Okay, real quick, real quick. Ooh. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs>